everyone, um, this is Daniel and in this video I want to do a quick tutorial of this new announcement that the SharePoint and Power Apps team have made, which is now you can have custom SharePoint forms with the Power Apps uh, and those also allow uh, multiple value choices um, or choice type columns. And this is not just the ones, uh, the choice type columns that you do, uh, multiple selections for that, but you can also do it for the people and groups or you can also do that for the lookup columns. Um, so actually I have a list built over here and we can quickly take a look at the list settings because this is what I'm going to use for my example. Um, I have a meal and meal is just a simple choice type column, um, you know, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Uh, it allows the multiple selections over here. Then the next one that I want to show is drinks. Um, again, it's pretty simple, straightforward. It's a choice type column. Um, allows multiple selections and then these are the options or the choices that I have. Um, then the other two that I want to look at are lookup type columns. So um, there's two different examples I created. One is I created for uh, something called credit card uh, because over here it is only going to be for single selection even though it's a lookup and this lookup is coming from a separate list which I have and that list is in the site collection. Um, so that's one. But then the second lookup that I did does allow the multiple selections uh, options over there. So for the location, it is a lookup and I've allowed uh, multiple values over here. So now that I've done that, uh, let me go and quickly demo to you the, um, the, um, the form or the custom form that I've built. And then we'll also take a, qu a quick look at that form. So now when I come over here, it looks just like your everyday SharePoint online list. But when I click on new, lo and behold there is a new form that opens up over here and um, you know take a look at that form it's definitely custom made over here for me because there's a little bit of tools and customizations that I've added so what I'm gonna do is let me start picking up some of the things over here I have um, meal plan yeah I'll go with all three of them um, then for drinks let me say yeah I'll take the milk and say fruit juice we'll do that visitors now this is coming from the people and groups so i'll go ahead and add both my name and i'm just doing a, a searching over here for me that's one and i can even go ahead and say search for somebody else uh, my son and it picks him up and there we go so now we have two over here and if you notice it immediately tells me how many items i've selected same thing for this one over here it went ahead and count gave me a count of the three items that i selected it's very helpful now this location column, if you remember, it is a lookup column, but over here I've selected the multiple um, item selection. So I'll go ahead and say select Casey's Corner is a good one, um, and then meet uh, the main uh, street and bakery has also got breakfast, so I'll select the two of those over here. Again, it tells me how many have, uh, items I selected. And for the credit card, that's the one where it is a lookup, but I'm only going to select one item. So for that, I'll select the option of American Express. So say I did everything over here and I click on save, it's like, hmm, all fields need to be populated. Oh, I forgot to put in my name. So now I can go and put in my name over here and now let me try to save it. And lo and behold, it was able to go and save it just to make sure um, the uh, American Express uh, and the location, I mean, the credit card and the location was lookup type columns. So if I select on them, it does give me their over here if I select on it it does show me the item from the other column um, and so this was just a really good example of how I can now build the custom forms for a SharePoint online list um, which is actually being used by power apps so let's take a quick look at this power app itself over here on the power apps that's where I now have the option for customized forms um, another thing I want to show you is now when I go back into your uh, list settings and if you go into form settings, before there were only two options, but now you have a third one. You also have use the custom forms created in Power Apps. Uh, this was there by default. Um, you can always go back and change it to the default SharePoint forms, uh, but this is this was the one which was there by default. Um, so now, let me go ahead and show you some more new tricks which were there in the form itself. So I go back to Power Apps, I do click on Customize Forms. 
and in the browser itself the power app uh, designer will open up over there and that is where or the power app studio will open up over there and that's where we'll be able to go and uh, uh, customize the form and over there too I want to show a few little uh, tricks that are available so it's opening up on the um, uh, the browser itself it comes up with this little pop-up uh, message you can I'm gonna go ahead and skip that um, so over here the first thing I notice is the SharePoint design integration um, and when I go over here um, it basically even just shows me that this uh, uh, this integration is directly coming from SharePoint on the top left you can see it's back to SharePoint so anytime I make any changes uh, it'll go ahead and save it over there and it'll take you back to that SharePoint your list automatically um, what I did do as some of the customizations was um, I actually created a warning label that's when the all fields need to be populated showed up over there um, and so one of the neat things that I notice is now when I click on the SharePoint integration it gives me these functionalities, which is when you are canceling or when you're on edit mode or new mode or when you're saving it, you can add all these other functions to it. So that's basically where I went ahead and added my function to uh, give me that pop-up warning label that if I forgot to fill any of these data card values, that pop-up shows up over here. So that's basically the formula that I put over here, which was again on my SharePoint integration in the on save. Um, I went ahead and did uh, this uh, formula, which is if any of these data card values are blank, uh, go ahead and give this um, uh, variable either one of the options. So if it's blank, go ahead and put it as true. If none of them are blank, make it as false. And if it is false, um, which means all the uh, data cards have been populated, then you can go ahead and actually save, uh, save the item over there. Um, so the other thing that I did was when it's on new, um, on, when I noticed was that it automatically goes and puts in the new form over here for SharePoint. Um, so once you're done, you can go ahead and save that. And then after it is saved, this link over here automatically takes you back and you can do the, the publish over here as well. This is a great thing I liked about it that it's actually keeping track of what you did so in case you missed anything. It will tell you that, oh, you forgot to publish, but do you want to do that? And I says, yes, I'll go ahead and publish it. So it's publishing. And once the publishing is completed, it'll close the app and it redirects you back to that SharePoint list over there. So this is just a quick example of the great uh, Power Apps um, edition or the custom forms edition now available for SharePoint Online, uh, where you can actually even customize the form, which is the way I did over here that I was able to put in that little warning bar um, over there available if I missed any of this. So once again, kudos uh, to the Power Apps and the SharePoint team for um, adding this new feature. Uh, it's something that I've been waiting for for quite a while and it's here and I'm excited and I hope that you guys also uh, use this demo to uh, start playing with this new feature. Thanks.